All right, what up, people? It's your boy Chi from Guna Eagle Eye coming to you again with a brand new video. This time it is Eagle Eye, the transfer rumor show where I talk to you. Excuse me, hold on. Let's get rid of that. <laughs> where I talk to you about transfer rumors and rumors surrounding the Arsenal. Um, all right, let's talk about this. This is a deal that you guys know I've been talking about for a while. Um, anyone who's thinking, oh, yeah, yeah, Chig, just go and watch um, one of my videos in the Chig Knows Best video series where I talk about Ibrahim uh, Sangara. Um, excellent, tall, big lump of a midfielder. He is essentially the Jonathan Tarr to midfielders. Someone who is often overlooked uh, because, much like Tarr, I don't think he's necessarily the most elegant of players but let me tell you something he is very very good big lump of a man six foot four maybe six five but i'll i'll definitely say six four uh ivory coast um predominantly i would suggest a defensive midfielder but a defensive midfielder that can drive from the base uh link up with players pretty well um i, I know the inevitable question is going to come I would say uh, party is a little bit more elegant and refined in the way he distributes. I'll also like to point out to people that party is four years older than this kid. This kid is 22 years old, um, played for Toulouse all season. Obviously, as everybody knows, um, Toulouse was confirmed as a relegated team from Liga 1 um, over this week. Um, to be honest, even if the coronavirus hadn't hit, they were like, I think they achieved 13 points all year. Um, so they were looking like dead certs to go down regardless. And, um, you know, he's one of the mainstays of that team. So let me address a comment from one of my regular listeners who was on the post. Uh, I like this guy, so I'm going to call it. It's not like a call out. But he, he made an interesting point that I think some of you guys will, will have a concern about. But hold on. We want a player from a relegated team. I'm like, well, well, yeah. <laughs> why, why wouldn't we? I mean, I, some of the people, listen, the fact of the matter is, people, we ain't what we used to be. So we're not going to be able, even if party somehow becomes available, every single day I have my doubts as to whether or not Arsenal would be able to get him because this is a top caliber player, a sought after player. You know, same thing with Awua, you know, the, and I'll come to this, come back to this story, but supposedly Awua is available for 42 million. So you would think for a team in, in Europa, 42 million is not the worst, but then you think to yourself, hold on one second. Even if he's available, is City not going to go after him? Because I would suggest they may perhaps need him. Maybe, particularly if De Bruyne is carrying out some of the threats he's talking about. They, he, he, and they can pay a lot more, you know. Chelsea be after him because seemingly Chelsea just get linked with every single player we get linked with. Um, you know, I, I, I would suggest probably Liverpool. Liverpool have been looking for a number 10 for a, a long, long time. These are all people that this kid could suit. Um, so when people talk about, oh, well, he's a relegate, he's just come from a relegated team. We're, 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 better, than, we're better than that. Are we? Are we? Because let me tell you something. If Max Aarons becomes available, I want him. It ain't a case of, well, Norwich are relegated. Nah, I want him. If um, Imi uh, Buwinda, Buwenda, I forgot his name, who also plays for Norwich, excellent central midfielder, guess what? I want that kid too. So for me, I'm not, I'm not talking about things like that. You know, for me, it's not about whether they've been relegated or not. Me, I just want to know are they a good player? Are they good enough? And this kid is good enough, I promise you. Very combative, big, strong unit of a player, good passer of the ball, uh, very defensively aware. Um, got good balance, good awareness, good wherewithal, um, decent penalty taker as well. Um, trying to think of a week. <laughs> like I say, for me, he's just not, he is not, Pretty to the eye. I'm not, not talking about how good looking he is. I mean, in terms of football, I, I, I would argue 
that's the reason that people overlook uh, Jonathan uh, Tarr. It's for that same sort of reason. He looks, because he's so tall, it's very hard to be tall and look like you're in control. Like, look, like you, you can't be over 6'4 and not look clumsy. Straight up. Um, and when you watch him, he does give you this kind of, yeah, are you sure you meant that sort of thing? But he always does. He, he, to be, he's an excellent player. For me, as much as party is my dream signing, actually, for us in our position, this is the signing we should make ahead of party. And you heard me say that. Um, in terms of price, um, well, prior to them getting relegated, he was being looked at for twenty-two million. Obviously, because they've been relegated. The situation has changed, and that's why Arsenal are having a look. Um, it's clear that Arsenal are prioritising a bit of a powerhouse in the middle of the park. Um, as you guys know, they've looked at Frank Cassie in recent days. Uh, Thomas Party is still their ideal signing, and I'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, but this guy is now someone who they are strongly considering as a potential move. Um, and he fits within our criteria. Let's be real. He's young, talented. Powerful, um, and guess what? He's cheap. So I, I think it's a signing that we should make a play for, just because I, I know a bit about him. So I know he's a good player. I know he'll bec become a good player. Um, supposedly, our competition at the moment is Everton and Newcastle. Obviously, anyone anyone who knows Newcastle have recently been taken over, and supposedly they've got more money than God. So I would imagine everyone would be linked with will be linked with someone like this guy. Um, and Everton have a bit of dough themselves, and we tend to go for very similar targets as Everton. So it would be interesting to see how this plays out. Uh, but for me, if, if, if I'm Arsenal, abandon this Thomas Party thing and go... Uh, and this is coming from me. I think Party is our dream signing. It's a signing that I think would be amazing. But actually, when I think about it, this guy might be more, first of all, obtainable, price-wise and ambition-wise. And secondly, I think we can develop him to be even better. Because don't get me wrong, he is still a raw talent. There is still so much improvement to be had with him. He's also 22. And just watch him roll at 22. You know, you know, you know these African midfield, I told you before, you know, and I'll say this unbiasedly as an African, you know, I, I'm always a bit sceptical about African strikers. I'll freely admit it. Um, defenders, we do quite well in. Goalkeepers, I would never recommend an African goalkeeper. Straight up, these are African goalkeepers are usually uh, the players that desperately would love to be on the field, and the only thing they had left was goalkeeper. <laughs> Midfielders, we absolutely, I don't care if it's on the wing, I don't care if it's centrally, that's where our bag is. And a big central lump in the midfield, she Go and get that. Go and get that. So, yeah, I, I'm good, Daniel. I hope you're well. Um, so, yeah, I would highly recommend it. Uh, for me, you guys let me know what you think. Leave it in the chat room. Leave it in the comments below. But I've been telling you guys this guy for months now. Make sure you do some research. I don't just mean YouTube stuff. Look at his stats. You know, look at look at things like this. He, he's such a good player. Arsenal, come on. Switch on. I hope you're on this team. So let's see what happens. Um, let's move on to apparently uh, Arsenal sales. Um, there is a um, an editor, I've forgotten his name now, on TalkSport, he was talking yesterday, and he believes that he's been told that up to six players are going to leave Arsenal in order to A, balance the books and B, allow them to do something in the summer. Uh, for me, I'm surprised the number is so small. Um, I've told you guys before, I'd get rid of at least nine people. Um, you guys will see who when I do a chopping block. Uh, but I, I would get rid of nine, and that's me being conservative. Um, I think at this point now, and what I suppose the only benefit about being in this situation is it forces these lot to be honest about some of the players that are there. You know, people like Mustafi, um, obviously he's got one year left. And I must admit, last summer I'd me mentally prepared for the fact that this guy 
might not actually ever leave until his contract's done. Um, his contract's done next summer. I'm hoping that prophecy won't take place because we could do with that done. At the very least, that's 15 million sat there. You know, and and let, let's be real here. I don't think we'll get much more than that. That's 15 million sat there. That's why I, I don't understand why we're being so precious about the Mkhitaryan thing. Just sell the guy. He wants to. We want him to leave. We need him to leave because of the wages. He wants to go. Let's just sell him and make something happen. So the only thing I can think of is that we really are trying to make a swap deal with that, with that, uh, with that geezer. And I know we are being linked with a couple of attacking midfielders. Here's one of them. And I'll talk about the other one shortly. But, um, yeah, I think from, from my perspective, six, it's got to be at least, <laughs> at least uh, one of the six set to be leaving. I might as well talk about this now. Is uh, supposedly Alexandra Lacazette is in talks with Atletico Madrid. Um, supposedly they are in advanced stages of those talks. Um, it'd be interesting because you can understand then why the party deal might be stalling if, if this is what is being negotiated. Swap deals are notoriously difficult to get over the line. That's why you don't see a lot of them in football. Um, and they do take a lot of time to negotiate and, and and talk to each other about. So I can't, I, I still feel like it's an ambitious one. But if we can get Lacazette to swap life for party, whew, what a deal that would be. What a move that would be. Um, whether a deal like that would jeopardize us keeping Aubameyang, one kind of stance on it is this. For me, I feel like if you need someone else to be at the club, in order for the club to be successful, um, then um, then we're better off without you. I feel like we're not just sold Lacazette for the sake of selling Lacazette. If we were to sell Lacazette and bring someone of Thomas Partey's ilk in, for me, I, I think that's fantastic. It will bring into question certain people's future, like Wenduzi, um, who I think has played a lot of football. I think Arteta fancies him less than say Emery, he was Emery's top performer at one point uh, but Arteta certainly doesn't fancy him that much um, I think Torreira has to be looking over his shoulder that being said I think Torreira for the last 18 months has been looking for a way out of Arsenal Football Club, maybe getting the Thomas Party would, would would allow him to execute that and do that, it's a shame because I do feel like the grand plan Arteta's ideal plan would be to play at, um, uh, Granit Xhaka alongside a Thomas Party, <laughs> which um, I suppose the only benefit I could see from that is one's a left foot or one's a right foot. That's literally it. Um, I don't know if they would necessarily suit because I don't because I think people get it twisted. Much like Torreira, Torreira is not a natural defensive midfielder. That's why often he gets caught out when he plays in that position. That's why managers don't often um, favour him. That's why Emre wasn't too hot on him. That's why Arteta's not too hot on him because he doesn't have the discipline of a defensive midfielder. He do when he does the job, he does it well. Don't get me wrong. But to be a defensive midfielder, you've got to be positionally on point. He rarely is. So I, I can see, I can definitely see why Managers are, are think, looking at him thinking, mm, and I I've been telling you guys this since uh, Torreira signed, he is not a DM. He's a box-to-box -box guy who has bundles of energy. I personally don't think he's good enough to necessarily be an, an advancing guy, but I think defensively, he's obviously very, very good, but positionally, he isn't. Um, my only criticism for, for Emre and Arteta is, Really, the kid is 23 years old. You couldn't have coached that into him a little bit about his positional sense. It also doesn't help when one of those two managers thinks he's a number 10. You're just confusing the kid. So I think from his perspective, forget what his wife wants. He might just think to himself, listen, there's a manager there at AC Milan that trusts me, that knows me. I like it in Italy. It's a country I've been in. It's a country I'm comfortable with. It's a food and culture I'm down with. Let me go over that. And you can see the kind of logic of that. So 
I think from my perspective, it might be best from all concerned if Torreira does go. Um, he wouldn't be one of my first people that I think about selling, but he'd definitely be someone I'd consider. I mean, if you can bring him in for 40 million, I mean, I wouldn't do a straight swap for Cassie. If you say to us, all right, listen, you need someone. Cassie's the only one available. I'll be like, all right, what, how much dough can you give on top of that? Because <laughs> I only rate Cassie 25 mil. So are you telling me you're giving us 15 extra mil? Then I might consider it. Uh, but again, what do you guys think that's important? Let me know. Um, what other story was I going to talk about? Uh, the Aubameyang new turn, I've seen it reported in a couple of papers. I'm not going to comment too much about it yet until I see some substance to it. Uh, but there's, an, there's a reference that Aubameyang may do a new turn uh, and sign for Arsenal, but I'm not going to uh, go into that too much. Obviously, we're heavily being linked with uh, the Feyenoord uh, attacking midfielder, uh, Kroku. Um, I just realised something. I just realised something. The two midfielders we're being linked with are both Turkish, aren't they? The Roma Giza and um, the fine old guy. I'm just checking that because I know someone's going to tell me I'm wrong in a minute. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, no, no, that's interesting. Uh, so obviously he's 23 years old, um, somewhat under, that's the one, under, under, and then Crocker. So what, they play together then? I just realised that. Ah, light bulb moment. Um, so, yeah, obviously, uh, under is um, um, obviously the Roma guy. Kroku is the player Nord attacking midfielder. Being linked heavy, heavily today. Um, seems like this deal is done without it being done. That's how widely reported it seems to be at the moment. Seems like we're the only team currently heavily chasing him. So much, though, that uh, Yat Stam decided to come out with some comments today. Yep, Sam was the one that kind of nurtured him at the very early stages. So he's the uh, Freddie Jumberg of that, of that establishment, where he kind of, almost the way Freddie was able to kind of nurture and develop Saka, uh, this guy has done the exact same job for this Kroku guy. And he believes that this guy's going to make it. Um, my view is this. I say bring him on because we need that sort of talent. 23 million is an investment, especially especially in this day and age. 23 million is not the easiest sum to spend on an unknown 19-year-old, who, to be honest, hasn't had the most dazzling, I guess, of, of, of stats. Um, having said that, I don't think he has the worst stats in the world either. Um, I say bring him on. I think it's important to keep in mind, Martinelli didn't have amazing stats before he came through. This, to me, is where you have to rely on your scouting network. You know, what is your scouting network saying? Do they say that this guy is going to be worth bringing on? If he is, then bring him on. If he's not, then, then let's fuck him off. You know, and this is why I, again, point to the fact that people don't place too much, um, uh, how can I say it? Don't place too much energy on the fact that we're linked with a player that might not be linked with abundance of other teams. To me, great if we're not, if we're linked with a player who's supposedly good and doesn't have a lot of teams in this case, great. To me, that shows that the recruitment team's working. Because as a recruitment, I want you to try and think of a way to get me this player at the most cheapest price possible. The last thing I want to hear is you tell me that Man City, Real Madrid, Barcelona are all involved. We can't compete with those guys. We can't even compete with the next level down guys. We have to compete with your Newcastles, your Everton's, maybe, maybe your Leicester's. Because quite frankly, that is the level we're in. We are ninth. We have to get used to this idea that oh, well, we're, we're Arsenal, we should be able to attract anyone. In theory, yes, but quite honestly, we've not been Arsenal in a while. And I think sometimes, you know, like with this Sangara guy, yeah, don't get me wrong, I would prefer Thomas Party. But at the same time, I know that this Sangara guy actually is a very good player and long term would be able to probably make a bigger splash for us. Um, so I think from, from, from my perspective, um, I say let's just 
let's just see how we go. Let's push. And if this Kroku guy is about this life, that's where your recruitment team should be coming through for you. That is where they should tell you one way or another, is this guy good enough? Personally, I think it's possible. I've got a better feeling about him than I do about under for some reason. Um, but like I said to you yesterday, I think under can play in a couple of different positions. He can play on the left, right, central, and I think as a number eight, although people dispute that last one. Uh, Crocker is another one who can play in a couple of different positions. He can also play as a number 10 or a number eight. To me, you need options there. Yes, I like Smith Rowe. I would keep him next season. I wouldn't loan him out. For me, I don't think Reese is going to be good enough. I would, I would loan to sell him. I don't think Willock is going to be good enough. I would loan to sell him. You know, I think this, this is where you just have to be honest with yourself about certain players. Uh, so I think from my perspective, let's, if we're going to do this, and we're going to be the self-sufficient, barely spend money on people, try and recreate the Leicester model type of team, then we need to try and find these talents early. And chasing shadows with Thomas Party, who's trying to renegotiate his new contract, I don't think is the way to do it. And I would love Thomas Party. You know, the latest I'm hearing about Thomas Party is that um, supposedly Arsenal and Atletico Madrid are, are deadlocked in talks right now. Um, they've had a couple of different conversations. They know what they want to pay Party. Party is interested in the deal, apparently. Um, and it's just a case of getting Atletico Madrid, presumably, to agree to a swap. I mean, that's the only thing I would say, because I'm yet to see a story through all this party nonsense that Arsenal have made a bid. It's very clear to me that for a swap deal to, to go through, you know, don't think that people think that, oh, well, the Alexis and Mkhitaryan deal went through quite quickly. And in my mind, I'm like, yeah, you think so? Who's to say that, that talk, those talks weren't going on from the start of the summer, this previous summer? So I think it's important that, you know, I think people need to recognise that these things sometimes take time. Like I watched, I watched uh, a brief snippet of, um, uh, of uh, AFTV's uh, podcast yesterday, and he saw that one of those individuals, I think everyone knows who I'm talking about, Say, so, oh, well, where's this cash injection? Where's this cash injection? Mate, it's been two weeks. <laughs> what are you talking about? It's been two weeks. If, if in two months we still don't see anything, then like, all right, I understand what you're saying. It's been two weeks. People don't just magic up millions and millions of pounds in two, week, in two weeks. But the mentality, it just makes absolutely no sense to me. I saw that, I was just like, shh. Okay, okay, mate. That's exactly the way business works. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, my gosh. Um, it's hilarious. And it's annoying because people see that and think, oh, yeah, well, where is it? No. Like, don't get me wrong. And this is, I can't reiterate this. I can't stand, stand. But this is where I think people will look at me and think, oh, well, true, this is a change of tune from you. I thought you hate that. I don't stand it. But I'm always fair about certain things. And to me, because I guess as someone that actually has insight into the way this economic situation is having an effect on business, I understand. I always said it from the get-go. To me, I don't think any cash injection is going to go directly into transfers. I think any cash injection is going to go into saving people's jobs. Isn't that the whole point of this discussion? It's about saving people's jobs and making sure that whatever transfer plan you had in January for the summer is unaffected. So that's what I think he meant by injecting cash in. I, I didn't read that headline and think, oh, we're going to have millions and millions of pounds for, for transfers. No. I think that was just Stan's way of saying, listen, you see that plan A that we had come the start of, of, of this season? Don't worry about it. We can still execute plan A but we do need to make Europe. To me, that's a reasonable businessman. That's a reasonable business in that particular situation. It's a reasonable businessman. So 
that's just my view on it. But again, you guys let me know what you think. One of two things that annoy me on F on F T V T I'll say I just thought, okay, let me give it a pass. Um what else? What else? What else? Let me let me just quickly check all my stories. Guys, while I do that, please do stick a like on this video if you haven't already. Hit that subscribe button again if you haven't already. Um, this is what I do. I'll, I won't, I always try and aim for at least one show a day. At the very minimum, I will give you five shows per week. I think I've reached that five show quota now. Um, go subscribe to Cheap Flicks. Last weekend, I dropped five reviews. I'm dropping two more today. Um, so that channel is nice and active. I hope you guys enjoy it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit a like button for that. And also, finally, the combat show. Me, Honor, and Will did a nice hour, 15-minute show over the weekend where we were talking about our favorite uh, boxers of the last 30 years. Sorry, our favorite British, our top 10 British boxers of the last 30 years. We all, all three of us had our own list. Uh, make sure you go check that out. It's an interesting watch. Um, and also, we're completely rebranded re and revamped over there. New logo, new everything. It's all coming. So make sure you check that out. Hit the subscribe button. The links to everything I'm talking about is in the description below. Um, all right. When is the next chip flicks? It'll be later today. But it won't be live. It'll be pre-recorded. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, Let's talk about Neville Fakir. Supposedly, Arsenal are still very interested in him, as they are Coutinho. So it's very clear to me that they are looking towards the future, particularly with Meza Ozil looking like he's going to leave the club um, next summer. Um, and to me, that's a sensible move, is to look and try and get a number 10. Uh, Coutinho is one of those options they're still looking at. Another one of those options is Neville Fakir. This one, I'm surprised the story is still rumbling on because Fakir more or less came out two days ago and he said, listen, I'm, I'm happy at Betis, that the only reason I leave Betis this summer is if Barcelona or Real Madrid decide they want me. Otherwise, um, to me, I'm staying at Betis. I'm, I've liked Fakir for a long, long time as well. That's another one that I've liked for a while. Um, you guys know I was extremely disappointed when I thought he was going to sign for Liverpool. Uh, was it last summer or summer before at this point? Um, and then obviously everyone knows at that point, uh, I think he did everything. He did all the social media, he took pictures in the shirt, he was about to be announced. And then something freaked Liverpool out in them scans and they completely bailed out of the deal. Um, and, and I think the suspicion is that he's been put off Premier League clubs ever since. Uh, which seems like a shame to me. Um, I think people have two schools of thought with this. Some people think, well, if the, whatever happened that put Liverpool off, we can't afford to take the same uh, risk. And I completely understand and almost agree with that point of view. Um, but I will say this, it hasn't stopped him producing for betters. He's still one of Betis's better players. Um, and I still feel, I feel like depending on what that scan says, and it would depend on that, a loan with an option, maybe, maybe I'd, I'd consider it, maybe. Um, it's a difficult one, that one, because I, I must admit, if you had to say to me, all right, you have a choice between Meza Ozil Phil Coutinho or him, to be honest, it would be him because the quality is so much better than those two, in my opinion. Um, I don't know. It's, it's a difficult one. And this is why I suppose I'm air towards the side of perhaps just bringing on this Croku uh, uh, guy from uh, Final, name of this, which I'm sure I'm butchering every time I say it. Uh, um, but again, what do you guys think? Maybe I, it's best to leave it to you guys. Do you think I'm crazy? Is this someone that you think you'd like? Um, let me know. Leave it in the comments below. Um, I suppose I did speak to, I'll speak about this, so let me quickly do so. Um, Leon obviously haven't made um, the Champions League. I think they were sixth. 
something like that in their league. I can't remember. Um, and obviously their league has since been cancelled, so they finished in sixth place. Um, and that has completely screwed Leon over. Leon are like, oh, well, we had all these plans of stuff we were going to do because we thought we were getting Champions League money. We're now not. We may be forced to sell a couple of their stars. And a couple of their stars we've been linked with. One is Moussa Dembele. Um, one is obviously their striker. And the other is um, Mr. Uwa, who I think is a fa fabulous player. Plays in the number eight position, excellent central midfielder. Technically, so, so good. I mean, he is levels above Sabayos, levels. Um, and as a player that I would love Arsenal to get, I don't know how we would do that, but I would love Arsenal to get. Uh, Leon, prior to all this, were very adamant that they didn't want to sell. Um, Uwe himself had always said that, listen, he was flattered being linked with Arsenal and City, uh, but that he wouldn't force a move from Leon unless Leon wanted to sell him. And it was kind of, that was that. And then obviously since that decision happened on Friday, uh, the president is going to come out and say, listen, we may need to sell Uwe at this rate. So it'd be interesting to see if what happens now. I know that it's, got, it's about to get very messy over there because um, Leon are trying, to, uh, are trying to sue the French Federation. And it's about it's about to get very, very messy over there. So any transfers, Leon are usually quite difficult to deal with on a good day. So I, I can imagine any transfers of any of their stars will be quite a protracted one. Um, but I think it'd be very interesting to have a look at that guy. Another guy I put in that party bracket as someone who I just think is would add so much quality to our team, um, especially if by some miracle we were able to get party and him to play alongside each other. Mito is something. It would be instantly so much better than Granite Xhaka and Lucas Torreira. Let me tell you. <laughs> Let me tell you. That would be an awesome midfield. Awesome. Uh, but again, what do you guys think? Leave it in the comments below. Um, I don't think there's anything else I've wanted to talk about. Um, let me quickly just have a look. I keep saying um like an idiot. I apologize. Uh, the William thing, I don't really have anything to add. I might as well quickly talk about Apple Makanu. So Apple Makanu. Um, supposedly, in his case, uh, that one is another U-turn. Oh, I tell you, it's like a soap opera watching that Apple Makano thing unfold. So, supposedly, he's been linked with Arsenal for a long, long time. I've always told you guys I didn't think it was going to happen. Then the two Manchester clubs decided that they were very interested in him. Then Liverpool decided they were very interested in him. And then he went from wanting to move to the Premier League to wanting to stay in Germany. And seemingly, he was all set to move to Bayern Munich. Then the last I heard of it was last week, where he basically backed out and said that, listen, um, I happily stay at RB Leipzig one more year and then move the following year. And the way I read it, in terms of all the stories, was that he would more or less verbally agree with RB Leipzig that he was going to sign a one-year extension and put a release clause in his contract. But supposedly, the president doesn't know anything about the, that last bit. And I said, listen, whoa, you've got one year left on your deal, son. So if you stay here, you need to sign a contract or I will sell you. So he's opened the door back up now for interesting teams. For me, I, I've said this from day one, abandon this deal. Um, I'd like us to potentially go for either uh, uh, a Jonathan Tarr or, heck, even a Nathan Aki. The Nathan Aki once worries me a little bit. Speaking of injury-prone players, this is another one who's an injury-prone player. Um, but to me, if it was up to me, that would be the choice that I'd be looking at. What do you guys think? Again, leave it in the comments below. And, yeah, Gabriel, that's another option. Fair enough, Chris. That is a, a, a completely fair option, Gabrielle. But again, let me know what you guys think. Leave it in the comments below. Uh, all right, guys. 
bear with me. Let's come into the chat. Please do stick a like on this video. I hope I haven't missed anybody's donations. Uh, stick a like on this video, uh, and I'll see what you lot are saying. Um, Caffrey CFC, my Chelsea fan. Uh, we want Gabriel too. Yeah, we do. We seem to be linked to a lot of the same targets, which worries me because you lot probably will have Champions League football. Um, and midfield of Party and Rice, in my opinion. Nah, not, not for me. Not for me, Leo. Uh, Jahid, I think you should replace him with Jovic uh, and Omar uh, Word. He needs, to, he needs to cut, fam. I don't, know, I don't know what Capone is. I'm trying to think what. Oh, okay, okay. Um, Chig, Daniel Amati would be perfect. <laughs> I, I don't know. You never know with Georgie if he's trolling or not. You never know. Speaking of which, speaking of Georgie, I suppose I better talk about that deal as well. Uh, I mentioned this before in this channel. Um, I'll mention it again. Uh, supposedly, Chelsea are having a close look at Chilwell. Uh, they really want Chilwell. Funnily enough, I know somebody who supports Leicester. And um, he doesn't rate Chilwell that highly. But Chelsea are, you know, Chelsea are being linked with any decent British player right now. And uh, Chilwell is apparently that guy. And uh, what uh, Leicester said is, cool, no problem. Whatever you spend on Chilwell, we'll spend to go and get... Um, uh, Tierney. Now, short of them offering damn near 100 million, I'll tell, if it was me, I would tell Chelsea to suck my left nut. We ain't getting Kieran Tierney. Um, but you never know with Arsenal. They, they, they make some strange decisions. And we're being linked with all these left backs. You do wonder what their grand plan actually is. But again, let me know what you think. Leave it in the comments below. You almost caught in the shot just now. No, no, no. I, I should probably drag it somewhere. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. Okay. Uh, what happened to Diabite from Leicester? He was wavy still. Uh, Georgie can answer that one. Georgie can answer that one. Uh, good Greenwich Jacker is dead. I hope we get tellies. Chilwell isn't all that, in my opinion. Thoughts on Ua and um, Werner. Let me tell you, Liverpool, if you lot get him, we might as well all take a nap for the season. Because I, I, I don't know what else. You guys might need a defender, maybe, to sit next to Van Dijk. Other than that, your team is pretty much perfect. Pretty much perfect. It's not fair if you get, get them both. Flipping heck. Let's give us a chance here. Uh, Chip, who would you sell to make this team better? Um, I will tell you this. This will be in a video series that I will do. I promise. So I'm, I'll start to roll it out over the next week over each position that I will strengthen and who I think would be best in said position. So you will find out in the next couple of weeks. Um, who, would, who would be your captain? If Uber leaves, I'm guessing that's meant to say. For me, it's Tierney. Um, Tierney's not played enough for me to, to be captain. I don't really have many options. That's my worry. Gosh. I don't know, you know. I actually don't know. My fear is it'll be given to someone like Meza Ozil or, 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 or Granit Xhaka. Oh, gosh. It's going to be given to Xhaka, isn't it? Uh, what do you guys think? What do you guys think? No Edward news. Um, the last I heard about this was on Friday. Um, and the last I heard about this was that uh, Edward is pretty keen on coming. Um, that There's some discrepancy at the moment over... Uh, price. Um, Arsenal value him more at 25 mil. They value him more towards the 40 mil mark. Um, and why wouldn't they? Is their prize asset? Um, I think they need to be a little bit more realistic, particularly given the economic situation at the moment. Um, but 
Yeah, that was the last I heard about that. Exactly, one time. South, line, South London find its nose. Uh, by the way, for those people who keep asking, because I've just seen that question now, for those people who keep asking, um, so one of the things I plan to do, I wanted to leave this for an announcement I can actually swift over and do it. One of the things I plan to do is um, I, I was going to avoid doing this, but then I've just decided to do it. I decided about a month ago to do it. And that is I'm going to do my FIFA streams on a membership. Uh, I'm not decided yet on a tier and things like that. But any FIFA streams, all my cooking stuff is going to be on that membership moving forward. I'll also be doing exclusive one-on-one -on -one uh, type of shows uh, where literally I present shows of various different people and that will also be on the membership. Um, so bear with me, I'm in the process of setting everything up. I'm actually buying a new headset um, so I can talk to you guys as I play. But yeah, I've just seen people talking about, uh, like Kaparin says, Chief, your, your career mode FIFA Rages would be funny. Blood, I can see it now. It, they are. They're not quite like Lee's, but I get I get real stroppy. <laughs> I get real stroppy when some bullshit happens. So yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I I, I, I yeah. <laughs> so if anyone who is watching, that's my plan. I'm hoping to have this set up by next week. Keep your eyes peeled on the show. I'll make an announcement when everything is ready to go. Uh, but yeah, that's that's my intent. It's not going to be some crazy price. It's not going to be about fifteen tiers either. It's literally going to be one tier. That's it. And I'm going to put all my extra content on there. It's going to be nice, simple, clear. Um, you okay? Babe? Babe? You okay? All right. Um, do I rate Foden? No. Uh, oh, that's a lie. That's a huge lie. I, I do rate Foden. Do I think he's the next coming? No. But I, I do think he's a good player. Um, oh, my gosh, Rich, you're right. I completely freaking forgot. He's going to be David Luiz. It's 100% going to be David Luiz. Oh, no. It's going to be David Luiz. Oh my gosh, I don't even know if that's better or worse. It's definitely Louise. It's definitely Louise. Oh my gosh. Oh gosh, it's so Louise. Um, yeah, all is good. All is good. I did a show with him on Friday. He's well, bro. He's well. Um, why membership? Why not? Uh, do a podcast, chair. Uh, soon, soon come, soon come, soon come. Uh, have you broken any controllers? Plenty of my time, plenty. I can't be a member of any channel. Ah, uh, is it? That's a shame. Miss, Miss Smith, I see you, girl. I hope you're well. Hope you and the hubby are well. Um, make it free, chick. Um, I always put enough content out there for my free streams. That's not going to stop. Um, but I'm also going to put some extra content for people who are interested in seeing that stuff. You know, I don't want to necessarily kind of move away from what the brand of this channel is. It is a football channel. Um, and I know lots of people who love to see me do a stream or two um, with FIFA and my cooking. At the same time, there were also people that were like, yeah, but Chief, just focus on the football. So I kind of, this allows me to do the best of both worlds. It allows me to put FIFA content out there without disturbing the main core of the orders, that will just be there for the free stuff. Great, not a problem. That's not going to stop. Um, same thing for the cooking stuff. You know, my, my cooking, 
I love cooking. I love cooking with the other half because I think you guys enjoy the way we vibe on that. No problem. But I also don't want it to become a, a channel that distracts from the football. So, again, the membership thing does allow me to do that. That doesn't also necessarily mean that I might not, not on a runaway, just put out a FIFA stream out there or just put out the occasional cooking thing out there. Uh, but I think the place for it, the long-term home for it, is the membership. You're not under any obligation to sign up either. Just like no one is under any obligation to make a donation. Um, I always think donations are great. They're fantastic. As I always tell you, I reinvest it into the show. You know, part of what I'm using for these shows is I'm buying the headset with that money. I'm buying um, a, a camera stand so I can film more with this. Because my this camera is better than any camera I see on the market. So I'm going to use it more, you know. And that's the sort of things that I'm doing. Uh, because I've got three channels and I need to provide content for all of them. So um, I will always vow to up my work level. But in order for me to do that, I'm going to have to introduce membership. Um, oh, cheap, make it free, make it free. Uh, why should we buy Decore? I've, I want to decor a three, four years ago. Uh, I still would not be adverse to that, but he is a bit older now. I think he's 28, 29. I'm still getting, but I, I wouldn't make as big of an effort for him as I would have done over the seasons. I think that is a, a one that got away for us, to be honest. I feel like we should have bought him a while ago. I think he would have made a really good impact on the team. Um, Chick, you should do a football podcast on this channel. Um, I do, but also you've got to keep in mind there's not a lot of football at the moment. I do. Uh, so my last one I did was with Claude and Kenny Ken. Um, the one I want to try and do next was with Ola and Diesel. The plan, initial plan was to do that today. Ola, who will probably be listening to this while at work, <laughs> I'm going to ask him very kindly, and Diesel, if he watches us in the playback, if we can move this 48 hours later. So I want to do it on Tuesday instead. The reason being, quite frankly, I've got to do something for work. And it's going to take up more time that I was going to use for the podcast. So um, it's important that if Diesel is watching this or, and Ola is listening to this, those are still the two I want on. I might try and draft in Lewis as well uh, and just have all three of us on. We're literally just going to kick it and talk about football. So don't get it twisted. None of that stuff is going to stop. And we'll always be on the channel. But there are going to be some changes. I done told you guys this a while ago. These are, these are the way these are the way I'm doing it at the moment. Um, who do I think is the best artist in the world, Chig? Music artists, artist artists, talk to me. Um, never get any of my notifications up uh, to let me know when you're on. Joanne, I've told them before. And literally, the only advice they offer is, well, tell your guys to take the notification bell off and then put it back on. The, the old off and on trick. So, so everyone who is subscribed and don't always get all the notifications to my shows, I know it happens because it reflects in the views. Uh, please do take your notification bell off, put it back on. Supposedly, this was the way it was sold to me. There's been updates since then. And hopefully, if you take the belt off and put it back on, it should work. I'm skeptical, but that, I'm telling you what YouTube have told me. So hopefully, you guys can go away with that. Um, uh, I'm baking later, Chuck, some cakes. Ah, the other half just ba uh, baked me some muffins. On Friday. My guy Capone. Um, Sebastian isn't good enough. Let's go to the bottom. 
VP's in the house. Big up, VP. I hope you're well. I hope you're well. Uh, Grant Mc, Mc, Mc Roberts. I like Grant. So let's see what he's saying. Uh, what do you think is the best actor and the best actress in the world? Oh, boy. Oh, my goodness. I might do a list on this one day on Chick Flicks. Um, oh, I, you can't pick one in that situation. I feel like at the moment today, um, oh, my gosh. There are so many. I mean, there are so many. There are so many. I, I think a lot of those, these Netflix shows demonstrate some really good acting, really good acting. There's a, a chick, I can't remember the name of her for the life of me, she, but she was in uh, 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 Hobbs and Luke, Luke and Hobbs, whatever that film's called, a Fast and Furious film called. And she's the main female. She's the female that is part of the Hobbs team. She's Hobbs' sister, right? She's an excellent actress. And I'm not saying that because of that film, but in other stuff that she's been in, she's been so good. But then you look at the vets, I flip me, I watched Bad Boys 3, and some of the range that even Mike Martin Lawrence was showing, I was like, okay, I didn't know you had this in you. So it's, it's so difficult to say who's good and who isn't. You know, Some of my best actors are, are my favorite actors are people like Tom Hardy, obviously Denzel. Denzel's son lately, by the way, smack it. You, if you watch, um, what is the rock show? That American football show. Oh my gosh, my brain is so Sunday mornings, it never works. You Americans know the show I'm talking about. Anyway, he's in that and he smacks it in that. He smacks it in that. Ballers, that's the one. Ballers, VP knows. Uh, Chig, Miss Dynamite or Carla? Who do you prefer, Chig? Ah, oh. F you for that because uh, both of them are North London's finest. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's got to be a Carla. A Carla is a poet, so I, I, I'm drawn to him immediately. I'm, I'm a lyrics guy, I'm a lyrics guy. So mumble rappers, you ain't gonna see me ever choose over a lyricist. Chig, are you a season ticket holder? I used to be, Kafri, I used to be, um, for Highbury. And then quite quite transparently and honestly, I gave it up because um I couldn't afford it. Um and I've been trying to get back on it ever since. So yeah, to to be perfectly honest, that is exactly for Highbury I used to be. Um and I've been trying to get back on it ever since. Um, I, see, for me, it's, it's, it depends who you like. My favorite um, artist, artist, I'm a big hip hop fan. And I know this is blasphemy. And I love grime to the day I die. Um, and UK hip hop, I'll always promote. In fact, I listen to more UK hip hop in US hip hop, but I grew up on US hip hop. So I'm always dry drawn to US lyricists. Um, so for me, I love Kendrick um, and J. Cole um, and people like that. For me, those guys uh, I'll always have a lot of time for. Similarly, I like certain deep stuff like Black Thought. Um, I love Scarface, so again, real old school here. Scarface. I love my animated rappers. So Buster, Luda, people like that. Um, from a UK perspective, um, I like Summer Stormzy stuff. Um, obviously, Wiley's an OG. and I'll, I'll always have a certain amount of time for Wiley because I grew up on Wiley, you know? I think Dave is a, 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 an extremely talented young man. And I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of commercial stuff at the moment because my brain's not working. I'm sure that there's some underground guys that I like as well, UK-wise. Um, I say keep supporting the UK scene, for sure. 
Because I think the Americans are slowly but surely taking us seriously now. Slowly but surely. Um, truth, naming all your favorites. There you go, brother. There's a reason you're drawn to me, guys. <laughs> there you go. Um, as a, uh, will I be going to any of the matches? It depends if it's played under closed doors. So it's looking like next season that is that the question for that. And um, yeah, I mean, for me, I always try and attend one season. And my regret for this season is I haven't. Um, between my show and obviously the watch alongs I, I do with Lee, um, I haven't been able to. Um, at some point, I will. At some point, I'll go back and, and, and watch some matches. But honestly, quite honestly as well, you know, I've got that much be I'm, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm not in, in, in Lee's level. But I've got that much beef with certain people that I'm only going to get a problem if I go to the Emirates. So I, I, wanna, I don't feel like getting banned from the Emirates because some idiot wants to get brave. So I feel like keeping a low pro... I'm quite... As stupid as this sounds, I'm quite a private person. And I know that's ironic with this. Um, but I'm not the celebrity guy. I'm not the person that craves that. I, of course, just like anyone, I want to have money and, and be successful. Um, but I'm not, you know, if you see me in person, I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just trying to put my head down and go, go where I'm going. That's just my attitude. Uh, but I know that this is something that I have an affinity for because I've always wanted to do the the radio thing, you know, I've got a face for radio. <laughs> so, uh, but I know I, I know I damn sure have a voice for it. Um, and um, I've got a feel for it. And when it's something that I know and I'm passionate about, I feel it makes good viewing, hopefully for you guys. And I think I'm quite fortunate in that I've got a platform which, yeah, could be bigger. Uh, but the one good thing about having an intimate platform is that I've got Good relationships with all of you. Um, even the Nimsies of the world are like taking the piss and the way you guys bully Omar. I, I know you don't do it necessarily out of malice. Um, and that's what that is the sort of stuff I do like about this particular situation. So yeah, here's what it is. These are all things or those things I, I reflect on and think about. So yeah. Chig, let's hear a rap. I'm not going to rap for you. <laughs> I'm definitely not going to rap for you. Not even a membership, uh, uh, not even a member would get that from me. <laughs> what made me support Arsenal? I've told this story a couple of times, but my mum made me support Arsenal. My dad supports United. Maybe long term, he was the smarter one, to be fair. Um, Capone. Uh, Chib, do you play? I don't like a star. Chib, do you play football in your own time? Uh, try to not. Truth be told, not in the last three years. Um, still a beast in defence. Don't get it twisted. I might be a big, but come against me. See if you can score. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, not as much as I used to, for sure. Exactly. And listen, I'm not in that league. Don't get it twisted. I'm not trying to pretend like I'm a celeb. But sometimes if someone goes cheek from like the other end of the platform, I'm I don't if you know me, you know not to do that. <laughs> anyway. Um and if you don't know me, I definitely won't answer you. I'm just not that guy. D Chick Van Dyke indeed, you damn skippy, bro. <laughs> oh, it, oh, if oh. <laughs> you know why I'm saying that? Because I don't. If only it was four fifty. If it was four fifty, I'd have a season to get now. You must be joking. You must have said that to me just to tease me. Uh, 
Uh, all right, guys. Let's give it four more minutes and I'm out of here. Four more minutes and I'm out. Uh, I am almost 6'2", Leah. Uh, Man Light Chig is a beast. Van Dyke, he'll be hard to get past. Uh, Chig, how much? Uh, the one I got was a little less than a thousand. A little less. A little less. And it wasn't particularly that great of a seat. And that, and that was family that gave that to me. So that's the only reason it was uh, that cheap, because it was technically their ticket. Uh, <laughs> with a name like Mc Roberts, I already know you're a tough bastard. <laughs> Mc Roberts doesn't scream sissy name. Just, just so you know, that screams hard nut Scottish. Let's have it type of name. <laughs> so trust me, you don't even need to say it. I already know. I already know. A thousand, yeah. Do you know how much second t second t tickets are now? Flipping heck. See, Ty, I'm glad you said that. Now, now you know why I'm suspicious of Leah. Because if she was really paying attention, she would have heard me say that. Chase Capone, you're not ready. That's my favorite meal. If you ask me, if you know you know it's your last meal, you're on death row, what would it be? It would be pounded yam and a gussie soup. Straight up. And I wouldn't want anyone else to make it bar mum. My favorite accent is on a girl is a Welsh accent, which is what my other half has. Uh, big up everyone in the chat. See, that's nice. See, I'm not, I like it. You guys are nice together. That's nice. I'm off in two minutes, by the way, but that's nice. Uh, 1K, you got touched in Baku. Uh, just keep in mind, I don't know if you're with me, that was 1,000 was the season ticket back at Highbury. Just to, just to make that clear, it wasn't a ticket. It was a season ticket. Uh, <laughs> I'm literally just scrolling through some stuff. Uh, Chip, did you see Goldbridge copy your... Lasagna with your idea. I liked it though. I like Goldbridge. I like I like Mark Goldbridge a lot. I got a lot of time for that guy. He, he's I, I just like I like his um he, I I just I I like I, I like him. He just seems like that goofy guy that you're somehow friends with and you don't really remember the story of how you became friends with him, or you're friends with him anyway. <laughs> so he can copy whatever he likes of mine, not a problem. Listen, like I said to someone else and said, oh, you'll copy a Robbie. It's like what? So Robbie's the only Arsenal fan that's allowed to cook then? Okay. What is the best thing I've cooked? A roast. Because going into that situation, I had never cooked a roast before. And, you know, I never really realised and considered the sort of things and efforts that go into a roast. Um, the thing I was most proudest of was there was one, um, a very similar stew to the ones you guys saw me make. It was slow roasted. It was over uh, eight or nine hours, something like that. Oh, it was, oh, oh, it was an orgasm in your mouth. It was, it was okay, that pause, that sounded bad. <laughs> it, it, it was just, it, oh, it was beautiful. Let's put it that way. Um, do I like expressions? Oh, yeah, very much so. Very much so. He's, He's a cool brother. At, at some point, I endeavor to do a show with expressions. At some point, I will do it. I, I the problem is I don't know him, but I know people who know him. So there's got to be a way I can make that work for them. 
But yeah, so at some point, I will get him on the show. Turkey or lamb? Lamb all day long. I'm not a turkey guy. Um, Cheeky cop who's Robbie? What? Exactly. All right. <laughs> That's why I changed what I said, because I know what you guys are like. Uh, all right, guys. I am up, out of here. Um, take care. And in, in answer to Samuel's questions, uh, which signings uh, that we were linked with to before uh, that would have improved Arsenal, Arsenal Wenger. Uh, Samuel, there's a real quick question to this. There are at least three 1-11 to sides of players that Arsenal almost signed. Pick any one of those. Pick any one of those 33 players. They would have instantly improved us. Um, genuinely, that actually exists, by the way. Google it. Any one of those players. I hate those stories. I don't understand what they are supposed to achieve. I hate those stories. But anyway, I'm out of here, guys. Enjoy your Sunday. Thank you for hearing me prattle on. Hopefully, you've got to know me a little bit better. And uh, yeah, I will let you know once all the membership stuff is set up and we're good to go there and I have a better idea of what's going to be on there. But that's the plan. It's going to be real simple. It won't be expensive. It won't be crazy price. It'll be a price that you even forget comes out of your account. It's literally just going to be exclusive stuff on there for you guys. All right? All right. I'm out of here. Take care. Deuces.